Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day to praise and worship your name. Although these words are very familiar, write them on our hearts once again. May the words of my mouth and meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Who among us hasn't been tempted to respond to a whiny child, because I said so? It certainly reflects irritation on the part of the adult that is uttering the because I said so. And it defines position. I'm the parent, I'm the grandparent, I'm the aunt, whatever, and I'm in charge, so you need to do what I'm saying. And it stops the whining, right? No, it doesn't. It never does. Usually, the whiny further digs in their heels because of the fact that they've just gotten this flat response. I think sometimes people have the same attitude about the Ten Commandments. Uh, that they think this is God's big, because I told you, people, you know, that it's just this, this is the law, this is the way it is, deal with it kind of thing. I mean, God is all-powerful, but are the commandments about power, or are they about relationship? You see, God's law didn't come first. I mean, we're already in Exodus chapter 20 when we get to the commandments. Before that is all about relationship, all about God making promises to God's people, God hanging in there, especially with God's whiny people. I mean, you couldn't get a more whiny people when they're in the Sinai uh, after God has brought them out of slavery into this land and they start whining about the good old days back in Egypt when they were slaves. They are whiny. But God doesn't give these commandments to say, because I said so, but because God wants to be in relationship with his rebellious and whiny people. It could be just like in your household. I have a book on my bookshelf on marriage, and it's entitled, I Take Out the Garbage Because I Love You. Love comes first. The relationship comes first. Then comes the picking up the socks, the doing the laundry, the buying groceries, the bringing home the paycheck, and yes, taking out the garbage. Dr. David Lowe's likes to describe the relationship between law and gospel. Yes, there's gospel in the Old Testament, and there's gospel in the Ten Commandments by saying 19 comes before 20. In chapter 19 that we heard Scott read, we hear that God establishes that relationship by calling the Israelites his chosen people. God says, I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured position, possession out of all the people. You shall be my priestly kingdom and holy nation. Then comes the commandments. In Exodus 20, what we often call the prologue to the Ten Commandments, some people call it the first commandment, uh, we hear, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. God establishes a relationship. Only then does God make a claim on our behavior. Well, the first thing that we need to know about law and remind ourselves is that the law, by keeping these commandments, that doesn't save us. It doesn't, it's not a means to our salvation. As Christians, we know that only Jesus can save us. And the second thing about these laws is that really, it's not about us. It's not about necessarily our lives first. It's not about being more perfect or more religious. And these Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions, are about 
our relationship with God and our relationship with our neighbor, meaning humanity in general. Rolf Jacobson writes, God gives the law not that you can become more spiritual or have your best life now. It's that your neighbor can have their best life now. And if our neighbor, if humanity has their best life, then we can't help but have ours as well. As a parent or as a grandparent or other adult figure in a child's life, you have certain expectations for children that are age appropriate. It's important to reflect on how much TV is too much for a preschooler to watch. As kids get older these days, we have to determine how much screen time is too much. Between texting, Snapchatting, gaming, how much time should they get on those devices? You'll teach the children in your lives to be respectful, right? to say please and thank you, to say I'm sorry when they're wrong, to not be a bully, but to help others, to be compassionate and empathetic. You want to raise good human beings, right? As children begin driving, you may need to set more boundaries and more praying, to be sure. Those expectations are not given because I said so, but because of love. You want your children to be healthy and happy and safe. You set boundaries and expectations so that by caring for others, their life in turn will be blessed. But when it comes to law that governs your family, the relationship is always first. The law is always second. You don't approach it as a friend, but as a parent. And in healthy parenting, the relationship always comes first, and then the rules come second in order to raise good human beings. But there are those days. There are those days when tough love comes into play. There are those days when you want to just say, because I said so. God had to do it too with his precious, whiny people with us. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And you might feel like saying to a child that you bore women, I'm the mother who bore you after nine months of mourning sickness, discomfort, and labor. Or I am the father and mother who adopted you, walked the floors at night to comfort you, held you fast when you had bad colds, cleaned up after you when you were sick. Those things may flit through your mind as you want to jump to say, because I said so. But remember, it's always first about the relationship. And so it is with God. So it is with God. God gave these commandments to us as a gift given in love to God's chosen people. He wanted the best for them, for the people that he loved. And if we, as God's people, can make it the best for our neighbor, our best life will come as well. Just think, just think how our lives and the lives of others would be, how this world would be if we actually lived these 10 words, not as suggestions, but as commandments. Let's read them together. I invite you to turn in the back of your hymn book, the very back of your hymn book, to page 1160. 1160 small letters on the bottom of the page.
Okay? 1160. The first commandment. Let's read it together. You shall have no other gods. And the meaning, what does this mean? Let's read together. We are to fear, love, and trust God above all things. The second commandment. What does this mean? The third commandment. What does this mean? The fourth commandment. What does this mean? The fifth commandment. What does this mean? The sixth commandment. What does this mean? The seventh commandment. What does this mean? The eighth commandment. What does this mean? The ninth commandment. What does this mean? The tenth commandment. Spouse. We'll say spouse there. You shall not covet your neighbor's spouse or male or What does this mean? God says the following, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing, well, this is really cheery, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who keep my commandments. God threatens to punish all who break these commandments, therefore we are fear his wrath and do not disobey these commandments. However, God promises grace and every good thing to all those who keep these commandments. Therefore, we are also to love and trust God and gladly act according to his commands. A couple things on these commandments as we share them. One, when we talk about uh, the fourth commandment, to honor what is honorable, it's very important that we uh, remember that, that it's all about honoring what is honorable. And then also when we talk about bearing false witness, that there are those people that tell the truth that isn't always easy to hear. 
Paul makes the point in Galatians that the entire law is summed up in the single command, love your neighbor as yourself. The bottom line of the entire law is about loving God and loving neighbor. And that is good news. Good news for my neighbor, and therefore good news for you and for me. Amen.